Hello my friends and welcome again to my video channel. Today we continue our work on the Drake TR7. Yes, there was a lot of work to be done in the last videos. But I think we are now on the straight on the way to home, on the home stretch. So let's start. On the pre-driver board, by the way it's the older version, pre-driver board number one, there's a trim part and this pot is crispy. It's for the setting of the gain. Maybe the problem with the output on 15 meter is caused by a low gain which cannot be increased due to this bad pot. It is this pot. We will see what we can do here. With the spot I will replace it by a new one. Now we will do a short sweep test. The PA brick is unsoldered from the output of the uh, internal mixer, so the input to the pre-driver is unsoldered here and the, via these clip leads the signal generator in the back is connected to the input of the pre-driver. The output of the pre-driver the antenna is connected to the power meter. I will feed in a signal from the signal generator and vary the frequency. We are in the uh, 21 megahertz range, but this frequency setting here is irrelevant for the transmit mode because the frequency is blocked here and the actual frequency is uh, generated in the uh, signal generator. So when I go to transmit, this frequency is decisive and not the frequency coming from the internal a frequency generation and I will sweep this uh, frequency where in the 21 megahertz band where we have the problem from uh, 15 16 megahertz up to 25 megahertz I will tune my signal generator by hand of course it's not a sweeper it's only a, a signal generator only yes uh, it's a very good one but <laughs> it's not a not a sweeper I will do it by hand and we can watch the output power on this uh, power meter and again I will operate it only in the 20 watt range uh, 200 watt later uh, in the 200 watt range I will do it later for a short moment I don't want to overheat the PA brick it's a little bit uh, dangerous in the 15 meter band on 21 megahertz the PA brick takes a little bit more amps than in the other bands so let's start another important information the internal ALSC circuit of the uh, transceiver here does not uh, react because the ALC is disconnected. It is connected to the internal driver stages and can therefore not block the output power on the PA brick. So the input here from the signal generator is a constant input irrespective of the ELC operation. Well, I will uh, operate in the mode CW and when I key down we have a little bit output power I can increase the output power. We are at, uh, let's go down to 16 megahertz. We are now at 10 watt. <coughs> you can see 20 watt is full scale, 10 watt. <coughs> and then I increase the frequency. 16 megahertz. 17. And here on, on 18 megahertz, you see we have a sharp dip. That's what we also have seen in the um, sweeper and the characteristic there was a dip at 18 megahertz. I don't know where it is. Then I increase the frequency 18.5, 19, 20 megahertz, 21 in the C. When I come to 21 megahertz, <coughs> the output power drops 21. And when I increase the frequency 22, it increases again and beginning with 24 the output power drops 27 so we have also here the on 20 22 21 we have a, a frequency a output drop at this frequency same as we have measured we remember this characteristic here we have exactly this curve again and I can now increase the output power to <coughs> up to 100 watt and then we can uh, observe the, 
be heavier at higher power but I can tell you it is the same twenty three twenty one and at lower frequencies at eighteen megahertz again we have the dip you see We have to watch the, the current. Fourteen megahertz. So you see, we we, we still have the problem. The peak at twenty-five megahertz, as we had before. Well. Let's make a summary. Where the heck is the problem? The problem cannot be in the low pass filter. The low pass filter is okay. When I feed in the signal, the sweeper signal directly at the low pass filter, which we did. The relay is not the problem. The transmit relay, because we activated the relay Mechanically, you remember on the last uh, video with a screwdriver in it, and I connected the sweeper directly to the relay, it was okay. The problem occurred when we connected a long wire from the output or from the input of the low pass filter to the output of the PA brick. The problem is there in both cases. With the sweeper, we have the problem in low power mode. The sweeper has some milliwatt. I think it's plus 4 dBm or so. And we have the same problem with high power. Characteristic is the same. So it cannot be a problem of a component in the low pass filter with high power. Could be theoretically a faulty capacitor. Which cannot withstand the voltage or the power. But the problem is not this. Because at high power and low power we have the same characteristic when the cable is connected. What can be the reason for this behavior? I thought a capacitive or inductive coupling on the low pass filters between the coils, but then we would have the problem also with low power when we directly measure the low pass filter. But this is not a problem. We have, when we install the transceiver in the cabinet, a better shielding. Maybe the shielding is a problem of the filter. Top is open and bottom is also open. So there is a contact spring on the, on the bottom side to have a better contact to the bottom cover. Maybe this is a problem. And the top cover, we have seen there are the screws missing. I have to replace the screws, drill them out or similar. Anyhow, I will stop this topic now. I have no real idea what to do. I think it would be a complete redesign. In this case we obviously have a problem with some ground loops or shielding or so. But we do not have problem on the other bands, only on 21 MHz and only on a certain frequency. At lower frequencies it's okay, at higher frequencies only 21 MHz and, uh, and the resonance on 18 MHz. Whatever the reason is. I think it's a sort of coupling, stray coupling, inductive or capacitive or both caused by the long wire. We replaced the long wire with another coax wire, the RG174, same effect, no improvement. As I said, I stop it now, focus on other topics to come to an end with this project. There are still some things to be done and of course the whole unit needs a realignment. By the way, I swapped this uh, faulty uh, trim part here, as we have seen. But this, this was not the, the cause, the root cause of the problem, as I expected. Because a pot is not a frequency selective. Okay, let's focus to the next topic. Next topic is a fan. I don't see the nominal data on it. Because the fan has one problem. Do you see it? This arrow here. It indicates that the airflow is into the 
PA break. That's wrong. Hot air has to be sucked out. The orientation of the fins from the heat sink is that the heat goes up. We have learned at school, warm heat always gets up. So it comes out and the fins are ori oriented in this direction. So the hot air comes up and is forced into this direction. Part of the hot air is going through the top cover. It's perforated and the other part has to be sucked out. It makes no sense when the fins are orient orientated in this direction to squeeze the cold air in because this would uh, work against the natural airflow. So always suck the hot air out. I will remove this fan, check it whether it runs and then uh, mount it in the right way. The fan is an EBM type. EBM is a known manufacturer here in uh, Germany. November 83, 115 volt, 50, 60 hertz and 11 watt. That's okay. I will check it first before I clean it, whether it is still running. It is connected to AC and I increase the input voltage and look it will rotate to the right side clockwise that's important we see the fins are oriented in this direction so the air is sucked out now it's 100 volt 110 volt okay uh, by the way, even when the transistor, the PS7, is operated with 230 volt AC, this fan here gets on this connection. So it gets on this connection here 115 volt because this connection here is connected to the uh, tap of 115 volt on the power transformer in the PS7. I will clean it now. It works. Make it clean and reassemble it. The fan is cleaned as far as possible. There is still some stain, but it's due to the age and the relative hard uh, environmental conditions where the transceiver was stored. I added here two new connectors. Don't have the original plug, so I prolonged it with a little bit of metal shield. So we have good contact. Now I can check it on the PS7 input to let it rotate. Let's do this. The 115 volts are connected to the PS7 connector to the correct pins. Now we can see the air comes out. More like this. That's correct now. And we can proceed with the mechanical improvements or repairs. By the way, this fan only operates when it is connected to the PS7, where the PS7 supplies 115 volt. I repeat myself, um, I have proposed to the owner to replace this fan by a 12 volt version, so we could connect it internally parallel to this pins here to the 13.8 volt. This would be uh, easier to reduce the speed, but the owner uh, said he wants to keep it as original as possible. That's okay for me, no problem. I leave it as it is. But by the way, I don't think it's its original fan. It's uh, another manufacturer. I'm quite sure it was installed later because again, it is uh, with a later date, 83, 1983. So I, I think it was installed in the 80s, not in the factory. I cleaned the bottom cover. It was very dirty, especially inside. Don't know why, but it was. The feet were, okay, the two front feet, the short ones, were installed with the correct screws. But the, uh, sorry, the, the back ones, the shorter ones were installed with the correct screws, but the front ones, which are longer, they had the wrong screws inside. One screw had the wrong thread. It fell through. 
and uh, someone decided okay instead of using the right screw he filled the whole uh, feet with uh, acrylic glue it was a, a struggle to get it out and to clean the uh, thread and on the other side there was a self-cutting thread also the wrong one luckily the thread inside the feet was not damaged so i can uh, could recut re it with a with the correct screw now it's okay but i only have a such a screw but it's it's good enough and i will replace the rubbers by new ones and then we can install the bottom cover the bottom cover is ready the new screws are in place i only have these hex screws here we have slotted screws but that doesn't matter the new rubbers are installed for rubbers that's the way how it is, has to be installed but before i can do it uh, we have to focus on the next topic these screws here one two three four five six six screws are broken first i ask myself how could it happen and now i know it these screws are corroded in the thread and these are aluminium screws and there is no chance to get them out without damaging or in this case um, uh, yes damaging it the heads skipped off but now we have only the bolts inside it's a challenging job how to get them out maybe i can drill them out or i use a, a thread remover but these uh, screws are rather hmm, okay first i will soak in uh, the thread with a oil or something uh, from the automotive business which is good to remove old uh, corroded screws and i hope it will grip now i will try such a frost and shock remover for screws from the automotive range and let it soak in for, for a longer period I hope it helps we will see what I can do and the next step I tried to drill out the old screws this way it's a two millimeter drill it worked i could drill in one or two millimeter into the screw and then suddenly it made pop and the thread fell through like a rivet this is a rivet and it is only fixed from the lower side it is squeezed in but as we can see here it has no no fixture on the top side so it is only there to um, take the the force when the screws is in from the um, metal cover and then it is pulled out but it is not good when it is squeezed in and the force of the drill was too big it happened here it happened here so this is not a solution to try to drill it out i have to think about another solution The best and the I think most professional solution is to bring in new nuts with this screw gun. I have to drill the holes up to five millimeters and then I can fix these new threads in it. It's a metric of course M3 and this will be good enough because there is enough space on the lower side on both uh, sides here. So nothing is affected <clears throat> and i can do this without damaging any on the board i think i will look at it but I, i'm quite sure there is no problem on the lower side the first row is drilled with five millimeter i took away a little bit the alc board to prevent any damage now these new threads uh, the, the rivets can be set in and fixed with a gun 
Now I'll do it on the other side. It's only important to have some paper under it to prevent any fibers falling into the transceiver. And then we can start. a little bit the ridges on the lower side it is squeezed by the rivet so we don't see any danger that's it just to show it to you <coughs> with the first one screw it on set it in into the hole then squeeze it together. And screw it off. Ready. There's one disadvantage. It's not fla absolutely flat. So I think I have to drill a hole into the um, upper case and use a washer. But that's not the topic and not the problem in the moment. Now we are at the end of part 9 in this series about the Drake TR7. We have good progress, mechanical issues are solved, the case is in place. We only have the problem that the new rivets on the top, uh, bottom side here uh, are a little bit uh, too high. So the Sliding of the case is a little bit strong, stronger than original, but this doesn't matter. I think it's okay. Now we have a good uh, contact that's important. We have four contacts on each side, so the case is sufficiently grounded. That's important for the shielding. The bottom cover is installed with the feet. Fan is okay. The case looks ugly. Well, uh, I don't do anything on it. <laughs> I leave it as it is. The end caps are missing. I will install them at the end of the project. The next step is the uh, complete alignment of this transceiver. And for this purpose, I have to uh, flip out the front panel a little bit. I need to remove the DR7 to get access to the boards under the DR7, the up converter VCO board and so. So it's necessary to take out the DR7. And for this purpose, again, I have to flip out the front panel a little bit. So I do not uh, install the end caps at the moment. Well, that's it. We are on a good way now. We are on the, we are on the home run. Uh, let us say this way. Stay healthy. Stay tuned. See you on this channel.